So far, we have focused on adding geometric vectors. Well, in this video, we'll talk about what the difference of two geometric vectors looks like and how to construct it. Well, there are two ways of constructing A minus B. Both are pretty simple, but I prefer one of the approaches over the other. So we'll go over both of them, and my favorite one will come second. Here is the first approach. You can think of A minus B as adding the vector minus B to the vector A. So we're interpreting A minus B, the difference, as the sum of the vectors A and minus B. And we can do that sum either by the tip-to-tail rule or by the parallelogram rule. Let's use the tip-to-tail rule. Well, here's the vector B. So we'll do one approach here and the other one here. We should get the same answer in both cases. Well, where were we? Here's the vector B. So we have to imagine the vector minus B, which of course equals the length, but points in the opposite direction. So this would be minus B. But I won't draw it here because I prefer the tip to tail rule. So I will actually draw it at the tip of the vector A. So according to the first approach, you simply draw minus B, which is a vector whose length is the same as B and the direction is opposite. Is that all right? Yeah, that's pretty good. Right here, this is minus B. And then you simply add minus B to A according to whichever rule you prefer. We're using tip to tail, so here it is. There was A minus B, excuse me, that was minus B, and here is A minus B right here. A, now let's see, A minus B. So that's one way of doing it, and it's pretty good. There was nothing particularly complicated about this approach. In fact, the advantage of this approach is that it reduces uh, subtraction which is relatively new to us, to addition, which we're already familiar with perfectly well. Well, here's the second approach that I prefer because it involves fewer constructions and it's a lot more vivid. And it also shows you interaction of algebra and geometry. And in this approach, you think of A minus B, let me step out of the shot, is the vector such that if you add B to it, you get A. Now that's pure algebraic way of thinking. I'm not looking at the vectors anymore. I'm just looking at the expression A minus B. And I recognize it as the sort of expression that if you add B to it, the result will be A. Right? It's pure algebra. That's the great strength of linear algebra, bringing algebra and geometry together. And sometimes the geometric approach helps us along. Sometimes it's the algebraic approach helps us along. Well, now for the time being, I'm forgetting about the pictures, just looking at the expressions and realizing that if I take this vector and add B to it, B's will cancel algebraically and we're left with A. So now going back to the geometric picture, we're looking for a vector such that if you were to add it to B, you get A. And of course, by the tip to tail rule, it, oh, excuse me, it has got to be this vector right here pointing this way because this vector plus B, so B plus this vector equals A. So this vector right here has got to be A minus B. How nice is that? We've obtained the answer we were looking for in a single step except according to the, let's say, tradition that we've established, all of the vectors in linear algebra emanate from the origin, so you have just got to draw it from here. Maybe you don't really have to, as long as you remember that that's where it should eventually go, but I think it's nice to do to remind ourselves that, yes, all vectors come from the origin. And of course, you see that the answer is completely equivalent to the answer we received according to our original approach. So we have once again two approaches. You can use whichever one you like. I prefer this one because I can draw this vector without any additional vectors to draw or imagine. I will just imagine here the line that goes from the tip of B to the tip of A and I can just do it right here straight away without drawing this temporary vector first.
and it's also very simple to think about. It's the vector that goes from the tip of B to the tip of A. So A minus B, in a sense, is the vector that completes the triangle that the two vectors start. And as long as you remember that it goes from the tip of one point to the tip of the other, but forget which direction it points in, well, just remember this algebraic way of thinking. It points in such a way, in such direction, that if you were to add B to it, it gives A. So if you have A and B, it's got to go this way, because when you add B to it, you have to end up at A. So, that, so this algebraic trick will help you remember which tip it starts at and which tip it goes to. Now, of course, the exact same thing works in three dimensions as well. Excuse me. All right? If this is A and B, let's call this A and this B. A minus B will go from the tip of B to the tip of A. That will be A minus B. Both approaches actually work in three dimensions, but once again, I prefer this one. So there you go. Now you know how to subtract vectors as well as add them.